everybody to another episode of Half a Clue anime review or anime review or animated movie review or is it movie review or is it about a, uh, another review where we talk about a topic where it doesn't relate to any two white heterosexual white dudes. I mean, not white dudes. For <laughs> <laughs> it's called Half a Clue Movie Review and we're covering today Turning Red. Turning Red. It's a latest offering from uh, Pixar animated films. And sadly, only in Disney Plus, because I would have loved to see this in theaters. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> and directed by Domi Shi, who this is pretty much a like a semi-autobiographical film. It's not going to be the only semi-autobiographical uh, yeah. film we'll talk about in our coming uh, Oscars episode. Filmmakers are so self-obsessed. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but with a twist this time, it's like basically it's uh, about uh, Maylin May Lee, who is uh, a 13-year-old girl living in Toronto, Canada. And she's uh, very hyper focused. She's trying to win the approval of her uh, mom. But one day, after an embarrassing incident, and uh, her emotions go out of control, and she basically reaches puberty, she's <laughs> yeah. uh, she turns into a panda, a red panda. Yeah, it's uh, it's <laughs> it's the Canadian female Asian version of Teen Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, puberty hits, and instead of a a wolf, you turn into a panda. It's <laughs> <is> cooler. <laughs> <laughs> this is cooler. It's more useful too, right? You go in and out, and it's like it's definitely a better looking film, you know. Yeah, yeah. ultimately, and yeah. it's instant too, and you could control your urges rel- relatively. <laughs> You're not like oh, I want to eat everybody. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry for Team Wolf fans who really love it. I, I I know people really love Team Wolf. Weird. Okay. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> what's I know oh, what's his name? Dylan. Mc- this is Dylan McDermott or something. The the main guy, and now he's like no, kind of Michael J. Fox. Not Michael J. Fox. No, no, I'm not. Uh, I mean, there's, there's another. There's another. T- I, I know. I know that film. But oh yeah, like there's that. the show. The, the show. show. Oh, yeah. I forgot they did a show. Teen Wolf. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about. People really love that oh. show. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I yeah, guess. yeah. yeah. It's like, I was talking about the movie, the '80s one. <laughs> he plays basketball. <laughs> yeah, that was actually what's it called? <laughs> that one. Okay, I have a soft spot for it. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun to watch. Um, yeah. People really love that show. I forgot yep. Dylan McDermott, whatever. But that's that's the whole thing. <laughs> Will we cover Team Wolf? Fuck no. <laughs> no. No, probably not. Yeah. Unless we ever do like a werewolf movie marathon Dude, thing. I, if I, I love werewolf movies. So yeah. if, yeah. if if I if if we could sum up for the future and we found out that Teen Wolf will get us <laughs> millions of views, then maybe. Yeah. But even then <laughs> it's stretching a line. You know anyway, I mean? let's get back to turning. You don't want to talk about how Teen Wolf and you know the <laughs> allegories between turning I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, pubertism, puberty through transformative me- mysticism. <laughs> no, it's yeah, this film, yeah, directed by Demishi who won um what's it called? Who, you know, worked at uh, I think like Pixar for 11 years and at first as an intern and then you know moving up and uh she pitched her I think it was a Pete Doctor and Andrew Sandin um her short film ideas which was Bow which en- ended up winning the Oscar animated film uh a- a- Oscar for animated short film. Yeah, Bow was so beloved everyone who watched it I think just had like a tear jerk unless yeah. you're Miles I guess. <laughs> yeah, Miles or uh Uriel. Yeah, like, oh, I was just talking to Uriel like the other day he's like that's like one of the worst shorts I ever seen. It's like wh- how? Why? What yeah, is he, wrong he, with he, you? He hates uh like um, sentimentality. Yeah, like... no, he does. He's a huge <laughs> anti-sentimentality guy. I'm like it works. I mean it's it's okay that you okay, I always tell people like it's okay for you not to like something. Yeah. But to say it's like empirically bad. One is it's hard to put it on an empirical scale for like creativity. Yeah. But two also it's like you're blind. Like yeah, the animation I mean, alone. It's like it's easy to understand why someone else would like it. And it's like, you know, like, I don't know. It's like someone who's like, oh, I don't like the beginning to up. It's like, oh, okay, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that laughs> like, you can go to hell, dude. Really? You just don't like up. The opening to up didn't it's, have it's you just too sentimental. bawling. Like, yeah. oh, my God. Like, whatever. It, anyway. Yeah. So, that's, so she, <laughs> she won Bow and, you know, she got a lot more um, cloud and creativity. Uh, you know, it's. Um, so she, and, you know, she was able to pitch her first feature film, Turning Red. Okay. And my gosh, just straight up, my opinions on this film this is probably one of my favorite uh, Pixar films in a while. Even though I really like Soul, I know you haven't seen that one yet. I've eh? not seen Soul. That's yeah, the I one know. I have not seen. Yes, I know. That's the. One. Oh, you haven't seen Coco either, right? No, I saw Coco. Oh, you saw Coco, but I you fell asleep. That's what I'm saying. That doesn't count. Yes, you haven't seen Coco. I think it is my. Favorite since like either Coco or Inside Out. Okay, where I was Inside like, Out's probably the last one that just really struck a chord that I really liked. Yeah, I also about a girl going through puberty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one's but that one's from the perspective of her emotions, right? Adult yeah, emotions and yeah. stuff. But this one's like 
one is unique because it's um it's like this 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 Pixar film compared to the other uh and we'll get into this later but this one's like from a this is one of the most grounded Pixar films for sure yeah <laughs> in, in, <laughs> yeah in, in the sense where Interesting, it's like it ends in a giant uh panda kaiju battle in downtown Toronto which is like I love which I at first I like I was like okay where are we going but then I was like okay it makes sense it all ties it back the Pixar way um <laughs> And uh, it's like you know, it's like it, it it captures the spirit of like a Miyazaki or anime uh, film much more, particularly the Miyazaki part, much more slice alive than a previous Pixar film, which I'll get to later. And mm. <laughs> and then what's it called? Uh, even though I really did like that one too. Um, and it's and what's and it's from um, yeah, and it's from a young teenage female perspective. And it's not it's not about a fantastical plot. I mean, there is fantastical elements to it, but it's literally just a metaphor for, you know, basically puberty or yeah, uh, what's it called? Like transitioning from to uh young to woman and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's like and I like that. I really like that. It's like it's even amongst not even just amongst Pixar, but amongst most American animation films, even in Japanese animation films, it's very rare. Like the like the main I mean there's several, but then the main shining example that most people think of is uh, Only Yesterday, which this film has a lot of similarities to and took inspiration from. It's it, which is a Studio Ghibli film I highly recommend it. Also about um this is basically a, a drama about a woman growing up and reflecting on her past life as a kid and stuff oh, like I that. See. Yeah. Was that? Yeah. You you we watched it together, remember? Only yesterday? My gosh. This is this is another classic episode of like, you know, it's, I, was like, <laughs> I I reference things. Fill up remembering everything. Remember we went happened. to we went to uh the uh what's it called? The Edwards in uh, Irvine and stuff with Ricardo, Darren, and Anthony. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. No shoes and she gets slapped. Yeah, she gets yeah. slapped. Yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I remember that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's like I, the main thing I remember. I'm sorry. I know, I know, because like I remember like the film too. It's like which I get because it's a very hyper focused the subject matter. Yeah, right. It's basically like like a, so like a girl who's going through like a, a woman who's going through like quarter life crisis and stuff, and she's reflecting yeah. on back. And you're like, huh. <laughs> that was okay. your reaction when I asked you. It was your reaction. I was like, how did you feel the film? Huh. <laughs> then, I was like, yeah, it was it's fine. You know, from what I remember, I liked it. It's cool. Not particularly. Obviously, didn't really stick with me. Yeah. Unfortunately, whatever. I'm not. Not every film is gonna resonate. Yeah. Sorry. Not every critical acclaimed <laughs> masterpiece is gonna resonate with M. Skinner. <laughs> masterpiece. Yeah. Whatever. We're no, not here to it, talk it, about that. We, we are gonna co- compare all <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Why are we gonna compare those movies? We're not like in depth. <laughs> but no, it's because okay, for someone who actually remembers a film. Okay. <laughs> there's sure. a lot of similarities, okay. and also because I watched a documentary and they were talking about inspiration and shit. Uh, okay. Okay. So okay, yeah, I love this film. Uh, I was like, I uh, and we'll talk about the animation in a second, but it's um yeah, just the animation style, the subject matter, how focused it was, and it changed up the Pixar formula just enough. I mean, it did stick to the overall layer. Where I was like, oh, it it was one of the most refreshing that I've seen. Even Coco, which I really did like, stuck to the A character B character storyline a little too much. Um, but this one deviated from that a bit but yeah okay go on to you what's your brief opinion on the film what did you think right immediate reactions right after seeing the film it's very charming i i liked it it was a good time um yeah it's like uh, the animation is cool i think the characterizations of like all the characters are like you know interesting again it kind of like i can definitely you can definitely tell it's from the same creator who made bow because there is that like kind of overbearing parent <laughs> aspect of it uh like that just kind of like carries through the film like it's like you know you, it's it's somewhat relatable you know like you know sometimes moms can be like uh you know demand a lot of you and you have to like balance that idea of being grateful versus like also wanting to be your own person you know it's like uh, it's tough and then especially going through puberty where it's like you know it's like maybe you you grow up like always being like viewed a certain way or whatever and then it's like as you begin to change and your outlook and everything kind of changes you realize you know what i kind of just want to be my own person and that can be really tough on like you know both parties so uh yeah no i really liked it the animation was like beautiful i think they, i don't know i feel like they 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 used up all like the best animation on like that brief cooking sequence with the dad like oh that, just, that was insane okay that's gorgeous. insane that that 
I think it might be the most beautifully animated, like three D three D modern animations, like like little sequence I've yeah. seen on the food. Yeah, it was like it, it was almost a little distracting. Where I yeah. was like, that was gorgeous. Why? Like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I guess they are drawing uh, close attention to the food and especially like highlighting the dad's skills. Yeah, it's like, oh, he's a, he is a very good cook. So I guess that's that was important. And then later, you know, when she's like, "We made you your best food, your favorite foods and stuff," and she's because the food is very important. Yeah, she's like yeah. trying to break away from that, like the family routine or whatever. And it's like, oh, that's good. Um, yeah, no, but overall, like, yeah, it was a very charming film. It was very nice. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Of like the of like the modern uh, like Pixar films, I think, like I don't know, I saw Luca Soul Onward. I didn't. I missed. No, I did not watch Soul, <laughs> and I didn't see Toy Story Four somehow oh like, my god i, I know like, i mean dude that one is like dude that's a big oof on your part i've been trying to get you to watch that film forever i'm like dude i even said like hey i'm down to just go to your house and watch toy story 4 and you're like eh. you know? yeah it's like i it's uh, i think i was i was definitely one of those people like who i loved the third one so much yeah. and i was like wow what a beautiful ending and i heard they're making a fourth one i was like oh you know f you you don't like, trust Pixar? whatever you know what i mean not in, you know, not in, just inherently anymore. <laughs> They've goofed a couple times. Did you see the Cars sequels? Yeah. Yeah, they goofed. But then what's going yeah. on? I mean, Toy Story, they never goofed, right? Yeah. Their batting average is 100. Yeah. yeah. So I was just like, yeah, all right, whatever. I was like, eh, not, not very interested. But then I heard good reviews, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I was like, I bet it is good. And then I just haven't gotten around to watching it. I just don't really have much desire to but I'll, I'll watch it eventually anyway but uh besides that, that one, one you know, you know. <laughs> uh, i was a little disappointed with incredibles 2 coco was like it was good from what i remember <laughs> i fell asleep so you know, yeah. No, and you no, yeah no but i don't know uh, as far as like the the modern they're like the past like five <laughs> pixar films like it's up there it's up there i think i don't know i also i, I did that I, I did I, I don't know i kind of had a soft spot for onward and luca for whatever reason i don't know yeah that's weird I'm yeah. just kidding. I'm saying Luca. I understand because Luca's like very, it's very pretty. Yeah. Honestly, like I had, I definitely had issues with with Onward and Luca, like both of them. But like they're both they're both good. But if I see myself like rewatching any of them, I don't know. Like may, maybe maybe Onward. <laughs> onward out of the uh, wait, out of, wait, wait. Onward out of, out of Luca and Turning Red and this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll reserve my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's it called? Okay. Right, so um, oh, right, let's just talk about the animation real quick. You know, we briefly talked about it with the, you know the cooking sequence. Very pretty. Yeah, it's insane. It's like it's frenetic, it's chaotic, but um, like you know, very smooth at the same time, and a lot of inspiration pulled from Japanese animation for sure. Like whether it's um, you know, whenever uh, the friends or May are obsessing about something or googly eyes about something, they have the Sailor Moon eyes. Or yeah, like the, the starry eyes and stuff. Eyes, yeah. yeah, or even like um, the way uh, you know anime does it, where um, well they do it to one save money and two to kind of highlight an emotion and reaction. Where it's like the camera gets tied on like a like animated character's face, and the background is like a single solid color and stuff like that. Yeah, it kind of fades away. Yeah. yeah, and then like they do like like exaggerated emotion, like if like sweat and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, they do that quite a bit, which I loved. It's just like refreshing for a Pixar film. I don't know when. I don't think there's ever a time where it's like it's been like that, yeah. you know, for a Pixar film. Like I, at some points, I was like, this feels not like a Disney film, like in terms mm. of the way it's animated, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and then and also like their super hyper focused uh, like color palette, particularly red. I mean, obviously, you know, yeah. I mean, what's it called? I mean, in my notes, I, put, I think like, red was a was a running theme. Yeah. <laughs> I was like red equals uh, red equals uh you know like red equals danger red equals anger red equals rust uh maturation uh, -huh. uh red <laughs> you know red's everything I mean no red equals period, period. Yeah. yeah red equals period and stuff <laughs> and, and <laughs> just like did the what did the, what did she say she's like did the yellow turn blue or something what did she say like she says something like basically asking if she like if she has had her period yeah it was, it, she said red too I think like yellow yeah. turned red or something like yeah, that. yeah like basically like you know I think hearkening to like those old uh like the like the the commercials for like you know different like periods and stuff where it's like it's always blue liquid because the, the world would end if we ever saw red liquid yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah we can't <laughs> handle that no <laughs> it's like in, in a weird way in a weird way it almost feels like the animation style for this not necessarily like in some ways just like the the um the feeling and the pacing of this yeah feels closer to like mitchell's versus the machine than like uh 
like yeah. onward or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. It's definitely yeah, it's more of like a stylized kind of like a uh, free flowing kind of animation style, which like which is pretty cool. Like it's it was fun. Uh, but but it still has that like insane Pixar detail, right? Where like yeah. the fur simulation. Yeah, I was gonna like, say that like probably is what impressed me the most because like I remember what a big deal it was when they did uh for Brave, right? The yeah, hair. for Brave, the hair, everything also red. It's kind of funny, uh, and it was like a big deal. Like wow, they had to like create all this crazy animation for this, and it's like now the fur is like you know it's very prevalent. Yeah, <laughs> like it's like all that big fluffy fur, and it's like that's that's cool. Like that's a that's a lot to deal with. But and then there's yeah. the um. What's it called? Like, and then even the water simulation when he's like cooking and shit, or yeah, like, yeah, that's great in general. It's like I know water was like if you watch Finding, I mean, it's not bad because like they're in water the entire time. But you watching like Finding Nemo, like sometimes it's it's just basically like people, you know, just like little ob- animated objects floating, but very well. Yeah. But then like in Finding Dory, that's where like they were like, okay, now we're Pixar, we got the money, yeah. and, then, <laughs> and then they kind of up that. But yeah, no, it's great. I I loved it. I it also I think animation wise, it's like. It, it ties for me in the recent Pixar films with Soul. Though Luca, Luca, there's a couple sequences of Luca where I really did love. Like particularly like the like where they're riding the Vespa and they're imagining the uh, like the the fields turning to gold and everything and the hills yeah. changing in shape. Um, but yeah, I think animation style. This was probably one of my favorite since Soul because Soul also took like a lot. Like a lot of uh, creative risks with that, with with the sequences, with this existential sequence of like how a person dies and comes. And this one is like, you know, just puberty. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. Um, and you know, some of the like the um, animation uh, influences and inspirations, like you know, obviously she's. Uh, when I saw a documentary. I saw like when 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 she was going to my room. It's like by the way, she's just like me in real life. Don't mean she. Oh really? Yeah, she's just like oh my gosh hey everybody like <laughs> fucking meetings uh and by the way i've seen like all the pixar bts and stuff this was like the most fun to watch because everybody felt way more um relaxed and enjoyable and shit uh-huh. but like she was like and when they were going into her house and then like you know in a creative process during the pandemic they made it she was like this is my room and this is my miyazaki poster number one this is miyazaki poster <laughs> number two miyazaki poster number three and this is what happens if i thought miyazaki and sailor moon were like part of the same universe and I was like, <laughs> that's cool and she has like this also like this fucking thousand page manual of like all the arts of miyazaki films or studio ghibli films and stuff she have a notebook with like a guy that looks like a merman <laughs> yeah no she does no there was a sequence there i was like i watched it I'm like, oh shit that's like just like the the fucking film where the mom was talking about like oh i i, I reserved all your sketchbook <laughs> and then they were going it by one and then she asked like can you can you guys cut this part out of the <laughs> documentary <laughs> and obviously they didn't that's really funny um but yeah yeah there's like the miyazaki influence is huge like whether it's like from oh, only yesterday uh which we talked about uh, briefly but the, the big one i think for animation style i think um my neighbor is the Yamadas because a lot of the character design and the feel of it looks like my neighbor is the Yamadas where it's like kind of the round angular face. But so sometimes, but they re- resemble shapes. You know what I mean? Like some of the, like the dad resembles like an egg shape, but it's like yeah. angular and pointed sometimes. And the mom has like, you know, pointed elbows and stuff like that or it's exaggerated, but soft and cartoony, like kind of how, um, Yeah. It's kind of like Ron just pulled a picture of my name is Yama. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> <laughs> like and, and kind of like what here, but it's like 3D animated. Um, it's round, but yet yeah, clearly you could make out a shape from the thing, at least for me. It's like from a non animator's uh, perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, and only yesterday I could see the resemblance in subject matter. Um, in, in but in that film, it's like a retrospective film, but in this one, it's um, you know, it's purely from that point of childhood and stuff like that. Um, and it was great like i could see a lot of like i i did like seeing kind of the influence like and only yesterday while well, it was retrospective and it had a kind of warm glow to it but that one also kind of um you know was rare in that example where it just talked about like female crushes on like males and stuff like that and then, like when she got her kiss like she she was able to walk to the heavens and stuff like that and this <laughs> one you have something similar but not not to the heavens but she's just like oh my gosh drawing the picture and she's like struggling between like what am i doing why am i drawing this fuck i guess can't stop drawing it but i can't stop obsessing about Devin. yeah um you are the light of her life yeah <laughs> and then your pride and joy get it together <laughs> <laughs> or how how the how the friends like all 
I go Google Gaga and like the anime, like the, the background blurs out and it looks like they're opening up the Pulp Fiction suitcase when they see the <laughs> boys, boys, like uh, for it's a four town, right? Four town, yeah, yeah, yeah. which and it's like Backstreet Boys, yeah, or like fucking songs written by the uh, Phileas Phineas O'Connell and Billie Eilish, yeah, yeah, which is crazy. Good for them. I would have never guessed. <laughs> I know they're just like they're everywhere. It now. sounded. A little generic, I'll say. Yeah, but I think purposely so, right? Yeah, I guess like, so. Yeah, yeah, purposely like uh, one of those. Um, I feel like they should have gotten like Justin Timberlake or something. Justin Timberlake? He's probably busy doing Troll, Trolls 3. Yeah, he's just trolling it up, I guess. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> What's called, um, yeah, and so it's like it, it's nice to see like pulling from th- that inspiration. And then also some anime like series influences like some of the way i guess like you know the animal transformation i didn't know it was like inspired by inuyasha yeah have you seen inuyasha as, as a kid no you never seen anything right i don't think so it sounds familiar but... it's, it's the one with like the guy with the white hair and the giant sword uh oh yeah i've not seen it but oh, i know yeah. what you're talking about yeah. yeah that and then there's obviously sailor moon and fruits basket i i definitely saw fruits basket in there uh, if we actually not know, it's, it's also a slice of life Japanese animated film about girls and guys and high school and stuff like that. You know, if that's your thing, you'll watch it. Um, and because of this, inf- you know, influence and having from an Asian filmmaker who's pulling in from much different sources from her other contemporaries, who are probably putting for more American uh, animation references from the old times. It's a it, it, it makes a visually different film and. This is a different subject matter. I appreciate that. I don't. What are your thoughts on kind of you know them pulling from different inf- inspirations compared to like their her uh, more male contemporaries or her older contemporaries um, who made previous you know Pixar films and stuff like that. And also, it's, yeah, it's cool. It added like a, it's its own unique kind of flavor. Uh, I think that's what the best thing. Like we kind of mentioned it uh, when we spoke about like you know the Batman <laughs> where yeah. we, like Matt Reeves was uh, very clearly pulling from like various sources of inspiration to kind of like, uh, for very specific things, you know, you kind of give a hodgepodge together and it creates this new tapestry of work or whatever. And it seems like she kind of pulled this out the same thing in terms of a lot of animation stuff that I had not seen. So coming into it fresh, it's like, it creates like a really cool, like a, like a, in a fun film that like, you know, is, is seems very unique in itself. So that's cool. Do you think um, at the end when uh, May was fighting her mama, Ming? Yeah. What's it called? That was like, <laughs> I don't know. I was like, I was thinking like, is, is some parts of this like an attack on Titan, but with like, you know, references <laughs> like where she's going in and out. <laughs> but instead, I honestly like, I would not, because she was like, she was talking about like, I know everyone's talking about the big kaiju thing. It's like, it had to be. And then it's like, oh, we'll, we get to metaphors and stuff like that. But do you think yeah, that was yeah, referenced yeah. to something like Attack on Titan or any type of I, kaiju? Yeah, yeah, any kind of like that kind of, yeah, kaiju, like giant, like transform transformative kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, Possibly. I mean, I don't Either see way, why not. Either way, it moved too. Like, you know, it's like the way it's ha- like, like going up and moving around her body and she's in The way she's moving through the, the city downtown Toronto is pretty terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh yeah, I'm sure it could be <laughs> like Attack on Titan or or Godzilla, or whatever. Like yeah, there's a few anything. mix of things in there. Yeah, she's like just stomping around. Uh, yeah, she was terrifying. The fact that she was like, they're like, oh, you should have seen her. She was huge, and I was just like, okay. I thought like, all right, maybe she's like as big as the house, maybe. And it's like, oh no, she's like skyscraper. I, yeah, <laughs> out of all the ones, like everybody else could have kept their panda, kind of. Yeah, they control the. She's like, no, her. She needs to, you know, like fucking separate that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah she really needs to to not have that. Which I, it makes me wonder, like. Because uh, there's there's a lot of ideas of like a pent up aggression and like you know kind of like bottling up emotions and and like everything else. So I think that's maybe what transfers that into like the into the panda mode or whatever, right? right? right. Like it's kind of like that built up a uh, like anger and emotion. So I feel like she's so she's wound so tight that I imagine what her mom did to her because she's obviously so terrified of her mom, which. It's kind of like it seems like Disney and Pixar have kind of really been sticking to that theme of like uh, generational trauma. You know, yeah, it's about family, uh, as Jeremy would say. <laughs> yeah, All right, let's let's get into the the family aspect of it then. Okay, yeah. transitioning. Yeah, it, it is a, it is that thing, especially with this one, particularly because it's it literally you see the generations before then, and yeah, they constantly mentioned the ancestors Sunyi and how like while it was great for her it was a blessing but like uh-huh. as generations went on what it was a gift was a curse right yeah and that trauma stuck through 
like in a metaphorical way or metaphorical and very physical way <laughs> yeah. like to these uh to future descendants yeah it's kind of like what we're saying like uh, from like in Kanto and stuff where it's like basically the grandma had like a very real based fear of like what happened to her and like the the trauma that happened to her and that just carried down to generations where it kind of just becomes this general anxiety and fear and that like you know just permeates through the the, the family and lingers there and it's like very understandable again in this case too where it's like the the idea of becoming a giant uh panda red panda sorry red panda they're not pandas yeah red so, pandas yeah they're get your shit right yeah they're technically more related to weasels i think than they are to bears yeah like the real red <laughs> pandas though when it's on documentary because they went to like a zoo and took pictures and like videos yeah. and stuff like that and scanned it <laughs> the they were like it's like it looks cute i really like oh my god well, it was you know brief aside like she was saying the reason why I wanted to make this one was one to autobiographical. Why red pandas in particular? Did she say that? There's also originated in China too. There's like a this is like a real myth or something or like no no I mean like red pandas like a lot like a good chunk of red pandas are yeah. from China. So. Oh yeah, I know that too. Yeah. But I just didn't. I, I well I don't know. I don't wonder if there's like a specific reason why no, she no, chose she, red pandas. There's no like specific myth about that. Yeah. But she was like at first she's like it'd be really cute. like she was like it'd be really <laughs> cute if we could. like she says she starts off with. Oh, this is really cute. I want to put it on screen. And then she figures out the metaphor and story afterwards. <laughs> That's so, great. Yeah. So she's like, it'd be cool if a kid could turn into a panda. And then yeah. and she thought of which panda and then red panda. panda. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. And That's now, cool. I'm glad to see red pandas getting a highlight uh, more than regular pandas. Yeah. And also the colors <laughs> of the red panda. She's like, it's like, the, it's a red panda that originated from China. But also the colors are like similar to that of a Canadian flag. And I'm a Chinese Canadian. So it's just like, it Boom. worked. And there it like, is. Oh. Red and white. That's yeah. all you need. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cool to have that instead of like a regular ass panda. I yeah. Mean, we saw Kung Fu Panda, you know, yeah. it's like, so that's like, it's yeah. been done in animated features. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Regular pandas have been kind of done to death. Like we get it. Pandas are cute. They're also like. Yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen too, horrible. just recently. Yeah. We're yeah, going to watch it next week. <laughs> Hell yeah, panda. dude. We're going to talk about Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, yeah. But no, anyway, I, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the generational trauma stuff, which yeah. I, yeah, I really appreciate. So I, I imagine that like there's something to that because again, when they even show her in like that kind of, uh, like that ancestor, like spirit realm yeah. area, like she's still like kind of breaking down. She's crying. Oh yeah, of, like, Ming, right? Ming was like crying. Was, yeah. Like, as a, and, and I love, oh, beautiful sequence as they're walking like in the lateral transition of like her growing slowly. Yeah. And, then, and I, I like that again, it's the daughter like kind of just like basically telling her like you know i know exactly how you feel <laughs> obviously yeah. and just like that that carrying over and her helping her heal and as they you know reunite with their parents i i would have liked i think that's something i was maybe missing was like that that final confrontation between like the mom and no, the we grandma and i didn't like when she like when she hugged and stuff like that and they yeah. already talked about several times where like you know she expresses regret like you know we used to be very close, but the red panda took it away. But she blames the red panda but after seeing all that happen. Yeah. I, I think her hugging Ming with the grandma was she was like, no, it's my fault. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah she, like seeing the tears down her cheeks and stuff like that. Like it was kind of like confrontation without words. That's that's how like yeah. that's how I interpreted it. Yeah. No, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Uh, But yeah, no, it was, it was really good. Yeah, yeah. The aunties too. <laughs> yeah, the aunties were also there. Yeah, it's the aunties. Are, just, it's just funny. Like any, anybody knows anything about Chinese or not even Chinese family, like Korean or any Eastern Asian family, the yeah, aunties are a thing. <laughs> they're annoying as fuck. And 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 then I say speak this from people who had to, uh, as a guy who had to deal with Korean aunties. They're oh fuck. Sometimes you. This was a trigger point when they came on screen. I was like fuck. The like the way their bags were, the sunglasses, stuff like that. They were styling. They were exactly like my Korean aunties, and <laughs> I hated them. <laughs> so it was like particularly tr like not traumatic, but it was like. I like it's like it's like PTSD. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, the aunties are coming. <laughs> it was like a horror film for me at that point. Um, and yeah, it was. It's, I did. I did really like that part and like how like it's it's like what it's like what what you do to your descendants, particularly your direct descendant, like the kids, right? It doesn't yeah. just affect them; it affects the people they raise and they exactly. raise and afterwards. Yeah. So it's like this trickling down effect, and the grandma like. And I did love in a very subtle way where like she kind of sees the errors of ways and literally seeing like it personified into a giant kaiju. Yeah. She's like, hmm, yeah, I, I fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe I was a little too harsh. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, and, and seeing the hat and her accepting me into because first she's like, she was like, you can't be a panda anymore. Don't be a panda, bitch. And then, you know, eventually accepting her daughter becoming a panda for even, you know, breaking her panda 
like what's a ta- talisman or something like that yeah yeah and it's becoming Medallion a panther so yeah, yeah yeah which was like at first when i saw that happening i was like wait are they gonna become pandas yeah and i was like the thing what? is is like they, they do mention earlier that they're like oh you can they only have one shot to be able to undo like the panda ness or whatever or they, like to basically lose the panda you have like one chance to do it but that's not true because they all kind of do it again. Yeah, I think they just said that to <laughs> pressure May. You know what I mean? That's fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and also obviously like, they all the ants. She she lied. He, she lied earlier too to May. Remember? So the more you become a panda, you is hard. You is permanently bond to and stuff like that. Yeah, and probably just to scare kids. Like how older? Like my mom and my grandparents said the same thing. They were like, if you yeah. have sex, um, you'll uh you, you'll lose your dick and balls. Like it, it, and that, that's the actual thing. Like like ants and stuff, and you mm. get like ant, you get like another one was like um if you um eat too many hot dogs mm-hmm. you'll start licking from the toilet and i was like i need hot dogs for like six months yeah i know it's so i saw that and i was like i, I when, when she said that i was like how true is this how true is this i was like i immediately and that's probably more from a cultural thing like how I was able to pick up on that and i was yeah, like it's always fun uh, looking into the psyche of Philip, like <laughs> yeah, I was just like, this film was like, practically, even though it was from a female perspective, there was a lot of things I related to. I mean, this is a lot happier version of like what my childhood could have been. <laughs> but there's some moments that I, I grabbed, um, and you know, particularly even like you know the the um, what's it called the uh, parent to kid oppression uh, aspect of of the storyline. Yeah, and particularly the you know the Al May is always trying to win the approval of her mom at no matter what cost. Right. And this is like like the twist on the Pixar formula that I really like because, you know, Pixar has this and they have this whole sheet. They're like proud of the formula. They're like, yeah, look at our formula. (laughs) Yeah. I'm just like, you guys, I I get it. I mean, anyone could pick up on the formula if you have half a brain, but like to flaunt it off, it's like a little too much, but whatever. But like, um, I like the fact that this was not, she didn't just have one best friend. She had like three best friends. Which is, and by the way, if you guys heard that, it's an atomic dog attacking our uh, recording studio right now. He wants to get in the podcast as their host, but we rejected him. So. Did you say atomic dog? Yeah. Isn't that like a, wasn't that like a PlayStation video game developer or something? No, it's Naughty Dog. You're talking about Naughty, Naughty Dog, Naughty right? Wasn't there like atomic dog? Is that something? There was like uh, Infinity War and they had the atomic symbol and stuff like that. No, it's yeah. like something else. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Point but, is there's a dog barking in the background. Right yeah. Now. It's fitting for this episode. We're talking about animals. Um. <laughs> I like the fact, and just kind of like how, and you know, <laughs> in the documentary she shows her friends, and they kind of look like the people too. That's funny. Um, where she's like, it's it's not just the A B character storyline, kind of like even Inside Out, which I really did love. My one qualm was, I mean, it kind of it, it fits in that one. They had a narrative reason why, but they usually try to focus on just like A B characters and stuff like that. You have our main character who represents one ideology and a B character represents another, right? And they both inform each other by the differences and stuff like that. And this one is it wasn't really that wasn't really the case. They're all four friends and they're they, they have differences, but they have like core value and they have core goal of like, I want to see Four Town or I'm obsessed about boys and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. I love Four Town. And and even when, you know, quote unquote, like the little twist on the, you know, and in all Pixar films, A and B characters split. And they learn about each other and then come back together, right? Yeah. Well, a little different. And it, it takes a while, too. There's like whole extended sequences of that happening and stuff. But in this one, it's like, what, it, felt, it felt a lot more natural because like I, 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 I've had exactly that moment happen where um, it's kind of like, you know, your, your, your parent blames like your non-Asian friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think one of them was Asian. Yeah, what? No, what, no, don't. No, I think Priya is Asian too. She's Indian. That's what I was, oh yeah. Well, yeah. I was gonna say I think Eastern Asian, right? Korean too. Yeah, she was Korean. The I think it was uh, her name yeah. was Abby, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, but she mainly blamed Miriam. You know. What yeah. I mean? Yeah. She was like, she was like, you know, the she blames a non-Asian friend or just friends. Um yeah. And and then uh and then saying it's not your fault type of thing, but it still punishes her later in, in a weird way. Uh, and then. And you're too shy or anything to repress to repress maybe. or scream. yeah exactly <laughs> you're you're repressed or expressed and it's like it's almost as if that that trauma from oppression parental oppression stops you from you know speaking your mind and finding your own voice which is a yeah. lot of like may's character arc yeah so she's like um so that scene i felt was a lot more organic and natural and also rings has a rings not a hot like it rings more uh, a bell of truth than some of the other separation scenes. And two, it was very, like, they, they reunited quickly without much drama. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. She, she just, like, straight up apologizes. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. 
this is like, you know, this didn't happen. I feel like if it was like another kind of film, they would have been like, she would have been trying to like follow them around school. Guys, wait, let me just give you a chance. And they're like, no way, man. Yeah. And, and like, it's like a long her. extended 20, 30 minute yeah. sequence. And she's like, how am I going to win back their friendship? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, And that's how I was like, oh, and it's not, it's not just A and B. It's like A, B, C, D. You yeah. Know what I mean? But this one, she's just like, shows up. She's like, guys, I'm really sorry. I messed up. That was totally my bad. You know, like I, I just didn't have the, you know, the, the voice to say to my parents, stand up to my mom. And they're just like, it's all right. <laughs> and you understand, that's like how real, life, real friends probably would react. Yeah. They'd be like, hey, you kind of sold us out, dude. And they're like, she's like, I know, I'm really sorry but about that. But if she that. sold us out to like the police, I'd probably be more pissed. But it's to her parents. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's yeah. to her parents. Yeah. So it's just like, so I, I, did, I did like that. I did like that twist. I didn't like it was just A and B. And it was like mostly from May's perspective the entire time. Yeah. So I like that they were willing to deviate from the uh, formula. And now it makes me, this is the first Pixar film where it makes me excited for future Pixar films or like I, they're going to de- I hopefully they deviate even further. And there's light year coming, which is going to just squash my dreams, but <laughs> Oh, whatever, man. Light year. Oh, no, no, awesome. no, no, I, no, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm talking about in terms of like, ex- like deviating from the formula of A and B. I, I could already tell like yeah. who the B character is in that one. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I haven't the, even, Oh, it's like, as yeah. I was like analyzing the trailer and then looking at the interviews. I, I do that. I get obsessed into a rabbit hole. Uh-huh. Um, but I mean, hopefully, you know, that film is fine. It's like I expect it to be a very fun time at the theaters. And I, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to it. It looks gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, like also changing up their animation styles and stuff like that. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping yeah. they use this, but they put it on fucking Disney Plus. So fuck you guys. <laughs> um, no, I get it. They tell an Asian story and then suddenly you're just all like, <laughs> no, now you're that. excited. I'm I was kidding. Yeah, yes, yeah. I, know, I, I, know. I, I was sold too. I was like, oh my God, it's exciting. And then but they did the A and B <laughs> bullshit and I'm excited for Luca. And then I saw Luca. And then, <laughs> um, that's it called. But yeah, it's, um, that's that's really that's really I really did like that part of um, the film and they're able to deviate from the formula. Yeah. Uh, wait. What about? Let's talk about the setting. You know, very specific. It's two thousand Toronto, it's Toronto, Canada, <laughs> two thousand two. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like you know people usually like like way in the past period pieces or in the future or just like present time, right? Yeah. Like you know, Inside Out's like it takes place in like like whatever year it came out. You this know, as a foreign film because it's <laughs> <laughs> what's it called? I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I had to get past the point that you know it was Canadian. I was like, okay, like you know, I had to get past my biases, you know, and everything. It's like, oh man, is it Canadians? Like I don't know, <laughs> dude. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. No, no yeah, his favorite it, part of um, <laughs> Anchorman Two when uh, the Canadian showed up, Jim Carrey and Marion Cotillard. Oh, that, yeah, it's yeah, hilarious. Yeah. They're just like, I apologize. Montreal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, no. Uh, no, it, it was it was cool. Uh, I again, like that's where I think it. That's that's like the the biggest signifier to me that this is more of like slightly autobiographical or whatever, yeah. or the fact that she's like obviously re- like you know reaching back into her own life. The idea that like she is. Uh, Canadian, uh, uh, Asian Canadian, <laughs> right? And specifically in 2002, yeah, yeah. where it's like flashback. She's into like you know these boy bands and everything. Which to be fair, boy bands haven't really gone anywhere, unfortunately. But uh, <laughs> oh, you you oh you just angered all the BTS fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like, Dude, you know they're uh, is a weird aside, but BTS is charging for because like their concerts are a, a live stream concert uh, in theaters. It was only 700 theaters um, in the U.S., but it's $35 per ticket, excluded from A-list and all Such that. But it sold out. Bullshit, dude. And you know what? In, in a weird Ugh. way, I guess it kind of is cheaper than going to the concert. Yeah, I guess so. You know, but you're Le- just Le- going to the theater to watch these people sing. I know. You know, Leia, I think she spent... She she went like... like Oh, gosh. I do you, not understand It was like... I think I'm was sorry. Like 1200 Whatever. I don't know. When I was younger... When I was that like you know younger cynical like teenager, I was like so hated uh, boy bands. But for me, that was like uh, that was like Jonas Brothers and like fucking uh, like One Direction and stuff. Eventually later, where I was like, yeah. this is lame. Now that I'm older and it's like BTS, like I don't care as much anymore. But when I hear stuff like that, like that just annoys the crap out of me. Still, that still just triggers that old, <laughs> that old young cynical, you know like young me where i was just like i hate this kind of music and i'm gonna tell you why you know what i mean like I it's just it is worse because like bts is like global <laughs> right yeah. yeah it's like that's God, i'm just kidding so I, I, just I, no no, no bashing factories. on 
whatever. No, no bashing on BTS. They have their own art. And I give props to them. And I, you know, as a Korean guy, I'm biased. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was like, I give props <laughs> and representing my culture and stuff like that. But it's, you know, I'm not even talking about it. But their ticket's too expensive. <laughs> too expensive. <laughs> whatever. Anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> the point is, is uh, what the fuck was my point? What was I talking about? We're, we're talking remember. about the boy bands and the, the setting. The setting. Oh, yeah, the setting. Yeah, yeah the okay. fact that it's well, like I guess, the mid 2000s or early 2000s. Yeah. That's let me, cool. Let me yeah, ask you that. So I guess like, <laughs> I mean, I guess you already answered this part. Tamagotchi. Of I mean, um, did I mean I know you talked about the autobiographical aspect of it, right? Yeah. But did like the hyper specific um nature of the setting and how much is tied to the autobiographical um nature of the film and mm-hmm. Domi She's life. Like how did that affect your viewing? And also did it help you understand and also your cause it, you know, what's it called? You, you living in two thousand, right? Yeah. And and being kind of recent in our in our generation. Like how I um, I was, what's I was it, nine? <laughs> <laughs> like how like how did it inform you know your understanding of the character, the themes, and or just like did it, it did it uh, enhance your viewing at all by any chance, or uh, did it just I, improve I your understanding? Say, of your character? I mean, there was like some like you know nostalgia moments, I guess, like with the Tamagotchi stuff. Like yeah. I was a couple years younger, like in two thousand two, I was nine years old. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I wasn't like super active, and I didn't hit puberty till later, uh, till like two thousand seven, two thousand eight. I don't know. Uh, January first. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. It, it it was it was cool. I don't know. It definitely uh, it, it's a, it's a weird thing. Like, I don't want to say it gives it like a timeless quality to it, but it kind of does in a certain sense. Obviously, it's like being set in a very specific time, but having a timeless like uh, kind of story being told. Yeah, like it can be really that could have been set in the 70s. It could have been set in the future. It could have been set whenever. Um, but like having it set in that specific time and place does give it a more like personal feel. And I guess for me personally, growing up being a millennial, I guess it, it gave that little extra like a uh, familiarity to it. Where right, I was right. like, Hey, I had a Tamagotchi too. Like, and, did it, like, <laughs> and it help you understand like particularly like characters like May better, right? Like her journey and stuff. Yeah. Like that. I don't know if it really did, to be honest. Yeah, like like kind of like, like you, know, you had a sister. I had, a, and I, did, I had like yeah. older cousins and stuff like that yeah. that went through the same thing of like, obsessing like uh you know over boy bands boy bands or yeah boys wendy loved like that. fucking backstreet boys yeah specifically backstreet boys she wasn't the biggest in string fan yeah, yeah she liked in sync too but like you know who didn't whatever yeah <laughs> bye bye <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye, bye. <laughs> um but yeah i guess it did like you know have the little extra like relatability but yeah i don't know if how much it really enhanced the story for me though per- yeah. honestly but for me it, like at least it, in the sense that I was able to like, cause you know, at that point in time, right. Where it's like, I like, I was able to instantly identify or like, yeah, the relatability, like, okay, I knew people that were able to do this and that. And, yeah. and also, uh, as an Asian American, you know, like what's it called? And my own height, I'm not a girl, but the, like, <laughs> but like some of her experiences with her mom and in that time period and stuff like that, like, I know she's like, she's old. Yeah. She's older than me significantly like 10 years or so, but, but some Ooh. overlaps. Uh, don't be she. Her mom? No, Domi she <laughs> Domi she is older than me. Oh, the, the yeah, mo- yeah, okay, yeah, her. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we're not ten, like nine or whatever. <laughs> right. Um. So, but then like some parts of that was like, instantly recognizable. I'm like, honestly, if I was like, some parts of this reminds me of, like Diamond Bar, or like Rolling Heights and stuff. Or uh, <laughs> I was like, some of the places they went, where she's walking by and there's like a Chinese dumpling place and them talking to the parents. Uh, for me, so I guess it had that like familiarity to it that like I was instantly able to latch onto and. Also made me understand the character a lot more because okay, oh, so she's probably going through this, this, and this, and this, and this. Yeah. Um, it was nice, and then um, and also okay, so in the, the, for the autobiographical part of the story, um, do you think you know did, was this the right approach, or did you feel like this story by doing this, like having this hyper focus to um her life, was it too inclusionary the story, or did it offer a, a unique POV by making it so relatable to a general audience? Uh, as a non-Canadian Asian female, I can say, yes, it was still relatable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, you, you, you disagree with because there's controversy <laughs> recently, uh, both from like regular film fans and not like a growing like subsection of Pixar fans who are like, what, like, duh, like, why can't they make more films about white protagonists? What? Yeah, yeah, did you not know? Yeah, there's like I've been seeing like it's literally pretty much all the other Pixar movies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, do you guys complain? And then and then uh, there's Cinema Blend. Um, how dare they make a movie about monsters? <laughs> yeah, I, know. I was like, toys. Oh, uh, and there's a big uh, controversy with the uh, Cinema Blend. 
Um, I don't know if you do you know the, the website or the YouTube channel or something? And these are double toasted and stuff like that. I don't know. Um, no. They're kind of one of not major, but they're one of the bigger uh, like film news publications or commentary publications. And the the managing editor, like one of the fucking like like uh, heads of that publication, wrote, wrote out a review on his website. And the whole bullshit, like, oh, I should have edited for you're the fucking editor. Of course, you edited your own shit. Fuck you. But yeah. he was saying that, oh, this is like the horniest Pixar film ever. And um, I don't know. This film is like a little too inclusionary and too specific for it to be relatable to anybody but a super small marginalized crowd. What the fuck? Yeah, she, he That's said so- that. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? And then, um, <laughs> and then of course, he got like based, like blasted for that review. Yeah, and then he just like, <laughs> like I'm sorry, I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not I'm a clownfish, yeah, yeah. Who, who lives inside of the ocean and like from Australia, so I can't relate to this movie. Oh, I'm sorry, what? I'm not a, I'm not a cowboy toy, or <laughs> it's yeah, like, I'm not a car. <laughs> <laughs> but shut the fuck up, man! <laughs> like it's Ratatouille is about a dude, a, a fucking rat. It's a rat in Paris, Paris who's like trying to be a gourmet chef. How relatable is that to you? What the fuck? But then the relatable after <laughs> that is just like, you know, achieving your own dreams despite any like yeah, exactly. uh, obstacles. It's, it's the like main a relatable theme of the it. film. The themes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he said that. I was like, <laughs> what a uh, dumbass. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm okay with you not liking the film, but yeah. just the way you presented your opinion was terrible. Yeah. You know like, I, mean? I didn't, like, yeah, again, like I said earlier, like, I didn't completely love the film but i still appreciated it and i found a lot of stuff to relate to it and i thought yeah. it was really cool and i like kind of like it. how your feelings are only yesterday were like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no yeah. shoes slap <laughs> <laughs> oh, um yeah, yeah but that's like yeah that's a pretty stupid reason yeah and then the guy came, and then you know the creators came out it's like look you know it's like it is hyper uh, realized and then you know they and then justin chan also like not about this one but before he's saying so like dumb. the more <laughs> it is the more specific your story is somehow it becomes more universally relatable right well, like that aspect of it yeah like what what do you say about inside out that's uh, exactly also, uh, that's it's about, about emotions yeah, it's about a little girl moving to san francisco but he's you know, by the, you know he's, a, he's, he's a heterosexual oh, white guy so yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean i think all heterosexual white guys have this opinion but like in that case yeah. he's like if it's not related to my exactly background the then. good dinosaur fucking it's like I don't, like a bug's life like incre- i don't know yeah. incredibles there you go there's you probably, heterosexual white males in there yeah and it's, like, <laughs> it's weird and it's fine to have heterosexual white males in your thing Buzz yeah. Lightyear is gonna be about a heterosexual yeah i'm sure he'll dude. fucking love it yeah and i'm like that's fine that's cool it doesn't matter it's just about how the narrative is told and, exactly and sometimes it's cool to have from different cultural perspectives and whatever but yeah there's him and oh yeah he got yeah he took down the review and he's like i'm sorry for not explaining my opinion better and it's like no your opinion is bad so you should just shut the fuck up yeah and also too yeah and it's like so he got roasted it's like uh they were like like he mentioned b- best films and of course his best films were all like with just heterosexual white guys yeah and then they were like what do you think was Sam godfather Sam? that's us jaws that's <laughs> us yeah he's like, he's like he's like uh and it, they were, those are great films back he's to like, the future that's us <laughs> sorry he's that's like, an aziz on sorry bit <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah he's all crazier stations right yeah, yeah no uh, for aziz on sorry when uh when oh, fuck he said like basically when uh slumdog millionaire was doing well and they're yeah. like oh like how do you feel like like are you excited about that and he's just like yeah sure a bunch of people that like i have nothing to do with that made a movie that you know that they kind of look like me so i want to i have to be really excited he's like is this how white people feel all the time yeah, <laughs> yeah. godfather that's us and then they're talking about, like, i remember in the transition oh yeah I, few I good like men that. hell yeah sorry anyway <laughs> but he was like um and then uh and then someone said like seven samurai and he was like yeah, it's a masterpiece and then they were like are you sure but it's like about japanese people and samurais i don't know how you can yeah. relate to it i was like <laughs> <laughs> uh but it's I, i'm glad you know they're very classy responses from the creative team oh and then a uh, brief shout out to um brief shout out, shout out to some of the creative team the i forgot the vfx uh, produ- uh supervisor's name she was great um uh, in the documentary and stuff like that and the production di- designer rona which i didn't know that i guess like they're like two halves of the same brain her and domi like also korean american and stuff and she added her own thing like i didn't even know that like some like basically may like she basically looks like domi but some of her face came from the like other staff and stuff your eyes are pa- you have patchy eyebrows let me put that in may <laughs> you have a weird lip you know, depth in your lip let's put that in may uh i just want to give a shout out to like uh rosalie chang uh i think she did a yeah. good job yeah let's talk like, with the voice, voice actress yeah like, the voice guest. i think she's like yeah she's a standout her and um 
honestly, and the kids too, like Ava Morris who played uh, Miriam uh, Hain, uh, Park Hain, uh, Hain uh, as Abby sorry, and um, <laughs> what's it called? I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher, I'm gonna butcher this name, but um, and I couldn't find anybody to pronounce the name, so I'm sorry. But I'll just say your first name, uh, uh, Maitri, uh, Ramakrish Ramakrishnan. That uh, sounds about right. Yeah, Priya, who, who plays a deadpan fan, a uh, friend, which is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, yeah, but Rosie Chang, gosh, she was great. She has like the weird, like small imperfect quality to her thing. Both is very childlike. That yeah. it just works so well. Yeah, the super energetic friend. Uh, <laughs> I was watching uh, this movie with like uh my nieces and stuff, and then they were like, uh, for Priya, she was like, she's so cool. <laughs> yeah, she never loses her cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, she doesn't. She's very, <laughs> yeah, she's very, very cool. cool. <laughs> I even like what they did with uh Tyler, the bully and stuff, where he's not like the stereotypical. Like he has very relatable things. Like I just want to be popular. I want kids to come to my birthday party. Can you please come over? And then he's freaked out by like he's kind of like, oh yeah, the panda. I'm paying you two hundred dollars for a kid. That's like fucking huge. Yeah. yeah. Although I mean, he's very clearly a rich kid, so he's. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll give you two hundred bucks. <laughs> and then, but then, and then at the end, when you see that, like, there's a different dimension to him where he's like, yeah. unlike the you know Vespa King and Luca, where <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> what's uh, it called? He's uh, well, you didn't love that character. It's the best character of the film. Honestly, it's the worst part of the film. Yeah, it's, it's so unfortunate is. that like yeah. he's the thing that really That's drags enough. it down. Yeah. Ugh. And then um. But at the end, he's like a four, he's like a four town friend, and he actually is part of the group now. And I never hated him. Like, yeah, he's teasing, but it's like not yeah. to the point. Yeah, he's yeah. kind of a he's kind of a little you know annoying douche. Bullshit. But yeah. yeah, but then like at the end, he kind of comes back and stuff. Yeah, um, at the end, it's like oh, he's redeemed himself. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's like I uh, there's a lot to this film that I quite like. Okay, let's um, let's. Uh, you want any final thoughts before we wrap this up? No. <laughs> <laughs> and people who are out crying that's uh it's like they're like why are they only making films about dude it's fine like please let's let's be open-minded please about what like yeah like no we're the outcry like earlier. that guy yeah they're like Stop. not even just saying, it's like oh there's like coco you guys already got coco i'm like dude it's like what i mean uh, you guys got coco what yeah. the fuck that's like one specific yeah and i'm just like <laughs> you guys i think all minorities are <laughs> yeah. represented in coco like we all that's just like, relate to coco that's what i hate it when black panther they're like bro you guys already got black panther you guys really need shang chi i'm like i'm not black <laughs> you know what i mean i think it was cool to see black panther and i love that film <laughs> that's like, I'm not yeah. fuck you you guys yeah whatever. i'm sorry go watch onward there's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. or luca depending on your definition of white who knows race is a myth anyways let's whatever just it's, continue. it's okay <laughs> so um what's it? like i said i'm very i'm very glad this film came out very excited it's exhilarating me to the point not even just because it's about you know asian uh asian like asian canadians asian american or asian canadians but and it was very relatable to me on that front but um, but just like you know, the hyper focused nature of that film and how autobiographical it is, how it deviates from the Pixar form, it just ever so slightly in a cool way, and the animation style, fuck, yes. So um, I'm just gonna my rating uh, in the museum because I feel like this will be a trendsetter for really, yeah. I because I in the way because my part of my criteria and thing it's like, how, will this influence future films and be kind of a trendsetter for that? And I think yes, for especially American or Canadian, particularly American. Because uh, Pixar is an American studio. Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how will influence uh, future animation films? And uh, not even just for Pixar films. I feel yeah. like it's for all, hopefully it is. I mean, everyone else copies Pixar anyways. Yeah. So. <laughs> and then um, how it will change other Pixar films or even other films. And maybe we'll see more Asian American or Asian Canadian or Asian like um, Australian stories. Oh, let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and also like it, you know, kind of like, and that's why Mitchell's regime was. It's also in the museum for me, like kind of like that, where the it's animation style. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is, and that's a big thing, and it's it's risky, and but it pulls it off really well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I know for you, it's probably what it's like. Uh, you know, should I guess? Should I guess your rating or guess? Guess uh, streaming with ads. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. I knew. I, I could already tell. I, I think it was like this, you had the same feeling. No, actually, it might be only yesterday. It might be lower. Only right. yesterday. I don't. I can't remember. Yeah, also, I, it was a long time ago that I watched it. My my opinion might have changed from then to now. Well, you haven't I don't seen know. it again, right? So no, I've not seen it. <laughs> yeah, again, no. Uh, uh, no, it's like again, that's not. 
I, I don't mean to disparage the film in any way. No, it's just like it your own there. personal thing. You yeah, didn't, you probably didn't relate to it as much as someone like obviously. Yeah, Asian yeah. Dude. If it were about a, a straight man, then yes, I would have related. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> or even also just I'm like just kidding, please. It probably <laughs> just didn't appeal to your sensibilities. Not even just like on a yeah. No, aspect. no, really. It's like no. It was it was a great film. It was you know very charming. I do really hope that the kind of like you know the. The more freeform animation style from stuff like, you know, Mitchell's and the Machines. Or though I like this one's it's a little more subtle. It's like this, like taking that kind of some anime influences and kind of engrossing like kind of mixing it in more with American animations and like again being like a big studio like Pixar, which is kind of like the titan of animation. Uh just, you know, only next to like Disney really. Uh that's that's really cool. And I honestly hope that that trend does move forward and we do see more of that. Uh yeah. So like again, I, I enjoyed it a lot. It was it was a great film. It was charming. Uh, I know my niece. If I if this was for my niece's rating, she would put it like you know in the museum of on the, museums on the planet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like in the museum. She's watched it like four times since it's come out, and it came out like what like Thursday. Like <laughs> oh, she, she beat me <laughs> Friday. <laughs> she's literally yeah. seen it four times. And it was so funny because like we were watching it in the living room. This is like her fourth time watching it, and she like and she had to go up to go to like the restroom. She's like, wait, can you pause it? Pause it. <laughs> She's only four, by yeah. the way. I like. She has good discipline. Wow. Yeah, exactly. She has better discipline than Ron sometimes. She says on her phone. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> but she was like, yeah. pause it, pause it, pause it. And Wendy was like, you've I mean, already seen this like so many times. She's like, just pause it. So yeah. Um. Anyway, so it's so good, for good me, good trend. Good trend. So for me, I'm gonna say yes. Uh, it's it's up there, and you know, honestly, it's like higher up on like the streaming with that. It's like if anything, I like might put a premium streaming because I did enjoy it, and I do see myself watching it again. So, yeah. But you said you watched Onward before this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, just because I haven't seen Onward since I first watched it, so I might want to watch it again. It was charming, and the the story about the heart, the dad, and everything, it was very touching. I know people who got very emotional watching that. You know, yeah, no, some parts of it was good. I think, yeah. If anything, it's weird. That it's, film, it's like, it's like in a weird way to compare that to Luca, and it'd be real quick because we're repeating an hour. I feel like we should compare that to uh uh. Oh my god! That oh, it's the movie. The, the, never mind. Never yeah, like mind. onward is like in, in a weird way. There's no huge crazy. Right. Flaws. Sorry. <laughs> oh, bright. Yeah, yeah. It's like no huge crazy. Actually, no. I, I crazy flaw, but I, I didn't feel like it was crazy exceptional. And also, I think that it didn't utilize the setting well enough. Yes, that yeah, was, that like was my big biggest. Thing. Like the fa- like, what's the point of us doing fantasy but with no fantasy elements? It's just, it's like, yeah, yeah, there's no point in that. That was my biggest issue I had with it. Was like, I, I liked like the basic themes and the story elements or whatever yeah. that was cool and the fantasy stuff is great like i love fantasy stuff i mean we're not here to talk rare. about yeah, yeah we're not here to talk about onward honestly yeah. but i just brief thoughts on yeah. onward was the fact that yeah it did feel like the magic and everything felt super underutilized and like a little bit lame but there's oh, an a and b character thing yeah, yeah but overall the main story is like the theme was what i really liked and it was that was very sweet and touching chris Pratt yeah. did a great job whatever yeah anyway I, uh thank you guys for another <laughs> <for> episode <laughs> <laughs> Have a clue. tell us which is your favorite animated film what is your favorite anime film what's your favorite studio ghibli film what's your favorite modern pixar film by modern i count I think, everything after maybe well, after you. uh was it well, after what 20 what should we say 2012 well, I was gonna say monsters. I was gonna say uh, monsters university because that's like then there's like that six year gap since then or seven years. Sorry, the past seven years. Or should we just say fuck yeah, 2012? Whatever. Yeah, just 2012. Since Brave. Yeah, so, or how about this? after um, was up? Oh, up was after Toy Story three, right? Uh, wait, wait, let me just double check. No, no, okay. So just after Toy Story three because that's when it hit a little bit of a a rut. Yeah, so after yeah. 2010, after 2010. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you guys, and then um, thank you guys, and honestly, really. Thank you for the continuing growing audience. We're we're still humbled and shocked by people actually listening to us. Shocked. Yeah. My jaw hits the floor. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. And uh check out our next up upcoming episode. Bye. We love you. Thank you.